Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. Good, good. I'm on the recovery train. Still, you feeling better? Yeah, yeah. I see a light Ah, at the end of the tunnel. That's good. Um, I think I'll be more or less back to normal early in the week, so. No, well, that's good. Um, um, Right in time for the most important election of our lifetime. Right, right. (laughs) Yeah, it's scary. Scary. (laughs) Yeah. They're all scary because somebody might win. Yeah. Well, somebody always wins. I know. That's the problem. (laughs) That is the problem. Incredible. Oh, I told that to somebody at work the other day. They were like, so the the poor lady was like, I was up all night. I got caught up on all this election coverage and I I just couldn't sleep. I was like, well, I got news for you. I know who's going to win. And she kind of looked at me and I was like, the government. Yeah. yeah, It's always the government. (laughs) She was like, well, I guess that's not really good, is it? I was like, no, it's (laughs) not. (laughs) You're right. So I got a kick out of it. I, um, I was listening to the newest No Agenda today, yeah. um, and uh, I didn't get very far into it, unfortunately, like half hour or so, 45 minutes maybe. But um, they played a clip from some Yale philosophy professor. Oh, yeah. And I I wish I had <laughs> had time to listen to the whole interview, because at least from the clips that they played on No Agenda, I thought... This is really is an indictment of the American university system right here, (laughs) that this guy would be a a university professor and at an Ivy League school like Yale. Like, this guy sounds like an idiot. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. This guy's teaching your children. That's incredible. I I heard the clip you're talking about. And yeah, I thought I I thought the same thing. Now, granted, I'm not college educated. So um, (laughs) maybe this guy's just on some whole nother level I'm above. But I felt the same way. I'm sure he thinks he is. Oh, he definitely thinks he is. There's no question about that. But I was like, dude, this guy sounds stupid. (laughs) So but then you heard the part where he was talking about, um, you know, the fascist takeover of america and lumped in libertarians yes well actually i thought that that might actually be fun to pull and just talk about but yeah, yeah. when he the, just the way he lumped in the libertarians with that yeah just seemed, the, the anti-government people are just as bad as the central government people yeah well and what? his argument was is they want to they want to shut down the government so they can run things yeah i know what, and what i'm like that? I'm, th- I'm sitting here going man i know a lot of libertarians and i'm just telling you that doesn't seem like the agenda no no <laughs> It, it well, ends after that first statement. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, Shut but, down the government. Okay, we're done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all go about your business. Exactly. <laughs> Unimpeded so. from now on. Uh, yeah, just, that was the... that particular line just cracked me up though they wanted to shut down the government so that they could run things and keep the the working class out of their way yeah it's like what? man this guy this guy's <laughs> clearly never been to an lp meeting is yeah. all i can tell you. unless he went to new hampshire <laughs> well maybe <laughs> yeah. and then they were trolling him yeah well exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh man i yeah that was that was funny he, so yale's where, oh gosh where is yale I have no clue. It's it's in that. It might be New Hampshire. I don't think it's New Hampshire, but... I don't think it's New Hampshire. Yeah. Or Vermont I, or somewhere. I don't yeah. know. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't. I don't even have my phone at the table, so I can't check it. Yeah. I know Princeton's in New Jersey. Oh, is it? My, my home state. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Harvard's in Massachusetts. Okay. Yeah. I have no clue where any of these schools... These schools weren't exactly on my list of destinations. Yeah. So. <laughs> Columbia's New York, right? Yeah. Um, anyway. So, what do you want to talk about? I don't know where you want to start. I feel like we should finish with election more topics like that. So okay. the other stuff that we've got, we should probably leave. Everything with. else comes first? Yeah. All right. Well, let's pick up with uh, something that I meant to say on the last podcast. Um that hopefully our discussion, our, our teasing a discussion of some more election coverage will keep the people that get angry about this listening. Yeah. Or maybe they'll just fast forward past the Israel part. Yeah. Um, but uh, so there were the, the leaks uh, about the Israeli attack plan on Iran. Yeah. And there's some interesting things to talk about in that, like who might have leaked this and for what purpose. And, you know, there's plenty of options there. Like, uh, the story was that it was an Iran hack. Not likely. Um, possible, but not likely. 
Um, more likely some U S official that, uh, is not on board with a wider war in the middle East that leaked it to try and prevent the attacks from happening. Um, there was, however, an Israeli attack on Iran. It just didn't do a whole lot and they seem to have pulled up short and everybody seems satisfied that that's the end Yeah. for now anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good. So you know, I'm glad it doesn't seem to be progressing any further, although there are plenty of Iran hawks. We can talk oh, about yeah. that more in the election coverage part. <laughs> yeah, I think um, so. But uh, the the thing that just got a little mention in some places um, that nobody seemed to really spend much time on that I think was important is that there was in those uh, leaked documents that have been accepted, I it seems at this point, as being... Legitimate. Genuine, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is that the uh, the intelligence services had assessed that there was, it wasn't likely that Israel would um, use nuclear weapons to attack Iran. <laughs> it's not likely because they don't have them, right? That, well, that, that seems be the... <laughs> uh, that seems like not the approach to take if they don't have them, right? <laughs> right. Th- then it's impossible for. Then the statement should seem to be it would be impossible for Israel to use nuclear weapons because they, of course, don't have them. But that's not what was said. <laughs> yeah. They said that it seems unlikely that they would use nuclear weapons against Iran, yeah. which, of course, is a tacit admission by the U.S. government, by official documents, yeah. that Israel has nuclear weapons. Yeah. Now, um, Israel is one of four uh, nations that have not signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Okay. Um, with uh, Pakistan and North Korea and I don't remember who all, but anyway. Handful of people. Yeah. Uh, mostly what we would consider bad guys in the U.S. Yeah. W- what the U.S. government would consider bad guys. The, the axis of evil. Uh, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but, and Israel. By yeah. the way, um, Iran has signed the <laughs> Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Yeah. Just wanted to point that out. Yeah. We're just so, accusing them of not following it. Um, and there's, you know, the the story is that Israel actually stole n- nuclear weapons plans from the United States back in the 60s or whatever. So, yeah. but I haven't really looked into that. I don't know. Yeah. So we'll leave that aside. The point really here is that um, the U.S. has, and Israel, both have maintained uh, this pretend game where they don't have nuclear weapons. The U.S., Israel's never admitted it, although they had that guy in the government we talked about early in this current war with Palestine um, that had said something about just nuking them all and got censured by the government and kicked out because they were like, hey, you're not supposed to talk about that in public, you (laughs) idiot. All right. Um, But uh, the U.S. government has maintained this kind of enigma around it as well. So this, as far as I know, is the first official U.S. document that has really contained an admission that Israel has nuclear weapons. Yeah. And this is why it's really important. I mean, besides the fact that there's another nuclear power out there that we're pretending isn't one. Um, But the Foreign Assistance Act um, prohibits arms sales and non-humanitarian aid to a non-nuclear state that is develop ha- that there's good reason to believe is developing nuclear weapons. Yeah. Nevertheless, actually has them. I was fixing to say, yeah. All right. Um, and so, if the U.S. actually admitted that Israel was a nuclear power, and this isn't something that they can choose to ignore, ignore, right? Yeah. Um, if the U.S. government admits that Israel is a nuclear power. The U.S. is forbidden, prohibited by their own laws from giving any non-humanitarian aid, which means essentially anything other than food and medicine. Yeah, That means we got to stop shooting down the rockets, right? Yep. (laughs) Or at least stop giving them 2,000-pound bombs to destroy apartment buildings in Gaza. Yeah, all right. And Lebanon. Yeah. Now. Um and the three billion dollars in non-humanitarian aid that we annually give to Israel, no. n- you know, never mind the more than ten billion that we've given in the last year. Yeah, 
right? So all of that would have to stop. All of our support for Israel would have to stop if we admitted that they had nuclear weapons. And that's why we don't admit that they have nuclear weapons. But I think that somebody should really pursue this. Like, here's a real government document that admits, however tacitly, Mm -hmm. that Israel controls nuclear weapons. And so we are therefore forbidden from giving further aid to Israel. Yeah. Until they uh, eliminate their nuclear program. Yeah. Which isn't going to happen. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's not going to happen ever. So I... I don't know. I'd like to see. I don't. I just don't see how that gets pursued, though. Like, I don't know what what mechanisms would be used to pursue that. Well, I mean, Congress could do it. Yeah. I, like the government yeah, can't the, do but, it. It's yeah, like, I, but that's kind of my point, though. Is the Congress has no appetite for that? Mm. Um, I just that's that's where I'm kind of like. I mean, it's definitely interesting, but I just don't see like there's just no appetite to deal with that whatsoever. Right. Um, and it's a shame because there should be. Um, yeah, but at the same time, we're sanctioning Iran because they could be weeks from <laughs> weeks right. from nuclear weapons. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we can trust that's a, the, we that's can a trust farce, the but, Israelis, but we can't trust them Iranians. That's a whole another, and, right. and that's really what it boils down to. Um, yeah, it's some sort of ism. I- exactly, it is. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. <laughs> You had told me weeks ago to look at a thread in our local libertarian yeah. discussion um, about religion that was going on. Yeah. And I read through it, and I, oh, man. <laughs> it's probably good that I'm not a part of that discussion sometimes. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. I mean, th- there were people saying, you know, smart, thoughtful things. Um, there was one person that I don't know why he speaks at all. Uh, and Mm. there, there was some bias in there that I, you know, that I knew existed in those people, but was like really on display in there. Um, this like anti-Muslim bias. Yeah. And, uh, like some idea that, um, Islam is the only violent religion out there. Uh, where, I mean, if you look at the Crusades, you got Islam being a violent religion. Yeah. And you got Christianity being a violent religion. Yeah. In that. I mean, they, you know. It seems to me any religion can become violent when it becomes the, when, when it's like we have to convert when everybody. When it feels threatened. Yeah. Um, well, that, that's kind of the main thing is, it seems to me, is the, when it feels threatened. Yeah. And, but one of the things that came up in that discussion over and over again is that, hey, man, but Buddhists are cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. Buddhists are nonviolent, peaceful people. Don't have to worry <laughs> about Buddhists. And I was like, man, they must not listen to this podcast. Yeah. Because um, I think it was the the podcast that I did on the Vietnam War. Yeah. Um, I only talked about it in passing when we were talking about suicide bombing. Um, like, the Vietnamese engaged in suicide bombing and so forth. And, um, but... What I had come across when I was just like looking into the phenomena of suicide bombing is that it's generally people that feel like they're being invaded. Um, Well, that's that's one that makes sense. Yeah, and it crosses religion and so forth. There, there's no, there's no any particular religious bias for or against suicide bombing. It's people that that are being invaded. Yeah. Um, and more specifically, for those of you out there that were participating in this thread or who also think that Buddhists are cool. Yeah. Um, there the is way, Buddhist terrorism. Yeah. I think Buddhists are cool, by the way. I actually, I do too. Um, like I just, I, I just I'm finished. not a Buddhist, <laughs> but I do. I like, I, I find the religion interesting. I'll yeah. just say that. I just finished rereading Siddhartha for like the sixth time in my life. Yeah. Um, I love that book. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, I, what I would suggest is people look into uh, the the civil wars in Myanmar and in Sri Lanka yeah. um, in the last 20, 30 years. So we got some violent Buddhists there? Got some violent Buddhists against Muslims. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and I think the one that people might recognize from us talking about the conflict here is what's going on in Myanmar that used to be Burma. Okay. Um and uh, we've talked about the Rohingya Muslims um, being ethnically cleansed out of Myanmar. Yeah. 
And so something like three quarters of a million uh, Rohingya Muslims have fled out of Myanmar into um, Bangladesh. And they were fleeing from, fleeing from the, um, the, of course, the Myanmar military because uh, it was a military junta for a while, and then it was like kind of a Democrat government, and now it's a junta again. Yeah. Um, but the other part of that is that the that Myanmar military is being supported by Buddhist militias. Really? Yes. Man, those two words just don't sound like they should go together. But it's the truth. <laughs> I, I believe you. I'm not saying. I'm just saying it, that sounds funny to even say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose. Um, now the. And and something similar is going on uh, with the Tamil uh, against the Buddhists in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Um, now, in both cases, the Buddhist population of these countries is like less than 10%. It's something like 5% in Myanmar and less than 10% in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Um, and in Sri Lanka, there's been like real terrorism on both sides. So yeah. uh, the Tamil and the, um, the Buddhists are, are both... Blowing each other up. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and throwing firebombs in temples and mosques and so on and yeah. so forth. Um, but in, in Myanmar, it's it's very strongly on the side of the Buddhists that are being the aggressors, uh, yeah. pushing the Muslims out. Yeah. Um, and uh, they claim to be defending from a Muslim invasion, that they are a Buddhist country, one of the few left. And yeah. um, that, you know, Buddhism is a very small religion on the world stage and uh, Islam is big. And so, but these these people feel like they're defending their culture. It's like a, it's a nationalist movement. Yeah. Um, they're defending their culture from <laughs> the invading Muslims. Yeah. Well. Um, but yes, so, so, so suicide bombers come of all stripes then. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was the point that I was trying to get to. Yeah. Um, and I just yeah. thought that it was worth pointing out. Worth mentioning. Yeah. 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 I, and, and it's the reason I think that it's worth pointing out is because of these weird biases that people have. Um, and it's not that I don't, I say weird, but it's not that I don't understand them. Yeah. Especially in this country where we've been told for 30-something years that Muslims are bad. Yeah. Um, but it's not, you know... Um, Muslims are mistreated in places where they're minorities. Yeah, yeah. And so... And they're, you know, in the places where they're majorities, they can, they can mistreat minorities. It seems like majorities yeah. mistreat minorities kind of wherever they are. <laughs> That's just kind of a scheme of yeah. things. Um, yeah, but we're above that in this country. That's never happened here. Yeah. Um, and especially <laughs> if they feel like they're impeding or impinging on the existing traditional culture. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, wow. Anyway, and, and, and to be fair to the people in that thread, they did also mention, um, you know, the... Uh, Muslims being mistreated in China and so forth. But yeah. I, I think that that's mostly, and again, like reading through that thread, I was like, man, there's somebody here that's getting all their news from CNN, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> China bad and Russia bad and yeah. Iran bad, um, yeah. because that's who I've been told is our enemy. Um, and, and actually the whole thing about the, it's not to say that Muslims aren't being mistreated in China, but it's certainly been blown way out of proportion. Yeah. Um, that it's not uh, like the the uh, article or study or whatever. It's not a study. It's an article. The article that all that stuff was based on originally had uh, like a an order of magnitude error in their estimates of people killed and so forth. So like they estimated ten times as many as there is actually any evidence for. Oh wow. Um, even extrapolated. I mean, like so yeah. not like well we assume that there's ten times as many people actually. Um, you know, being put into camps or so, whatever, than are, as in, like, we made a mathematical error in our extrapolation that made it 10 times higher than what it, yeah. what it should have been. Well, so, anybody getting put in camps, I think, is a problem. Oh, I agree. So, I, I said, then, I'm not just, I'm, I'm yeah. not dismissing it. Yeah. I'm just saying it's been blown that way out of been, proportion. The idea that it's an ethnic cleansing is, is a farce. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Um, and there's plenty of evidence for that, and we're not going to go through that on this podcast. Because we yeah. have before, partly, and then yeah. also it's just freely available. Yeah. Um, 
So there's all that out of the way. And we're only 20 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got plenty of time to talk about the, the politics of the day. No, no. We're going to first. Well, this is kind of talking about politics of the day. This but should what lead I, us into the <laughs> politics of the day. Sure. Um, <laughs> the thing, the, the topic that I really wanted to discuss today was the uh, Washington Post and then the L.A. Times um, both announced that they were not endorsing a candidate in this election. No. And it created... Oh, I'm going to use some one of these like news um, phrases here. It created a firestorm on the left. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, that they wouldn't do their duty and endorse Kamala Harris. Yeah. Because the like I don't know how far back the L.A. Times goes, but the Washington Post has endorsed the Democrat candidate for like 25 or 30 years. Wow. So modern history. Yeah. Like yeah. every time. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And it's just, it's kind of incredible the things that people have said about it. It kind of makes it. you wonder why they didn't just do it. Well, um, again, the Washington Post, the editorial board, I don't know, some big truck, man. I don't know if y'all could hear that, but it scared me. <laughs> oh, shit, are we fixing to get hit? <laughs> <laughs> like some plane crashing? Uh, no, just some big truck. Yeah, um, happens all the time. I'm on the main road here, so. Yeah, that seemed extreme, though. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they had a stuffed up muffler or something. No. Anyway. <laughs> it's reflecting off the houses on the other side of the street. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I can come up with excuses. I'm all day long, right? Yep. <laughs> My house is old and it's falling apart, so the walls are real thin. That's not really true, but yeah. it could work but as it an sounds excuse. Good, yeah. Right? yeah. Um, anyway, um, the... The Washington Post, the editorial board, had drafted a um, an endorsement of Kamala Harris uh, oh. before the paper announced. Well, actually, that, maybe that's why they they were just like, man, like we just can't bring ourselves to write this many nice things about her. I don't think they had trouble. They sent the story is they sent it to Bezos, and then the word came down that the paper wasn't going to an endorse the candidate. So, is this the first election that Bezos has been in charge? No. Okay. No. Yeah. All right. He's, How long has he been in charge there? He, t- 15 years, 20 been years, that long? 15 I mean, years, I, I, I think. do remember when he bought it. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize it had been that long, but you may be right. I think it's been at least 15 years. Okay. Okay. Um, now, the, the Washington Post put out an article saying that they essentially covering themselves. Yeah. Um, and explaining why they decided not to endorse a candidate. Yeah. And they said essentially um, that it's not their job to endorse candidates or to tell people how to vote. Um, that their job is to uh, cover the issues and the candidates and provide all the information necessary for the voters to make their own decisions about who they wanted to vote for. And after 25 years, we've decided to follow through with that. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, Now, I think that's a great position for media to take. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Um, But... (laughs) Their literature doesn't seem to to correspond with that, though. Well, that, I mean, that's the other thing is that even though they're not endorsing Kamala Harris, it's very clear they have a um, preference that that they want Kamala to win. Yeah, uh, there is. I don't know that there have been any pro Trump. I don't think that there's been any pro Trump editorials printed in the Washington Post. Yeah, um, there have been some kind of neutral editorials printed. A lot of pro Democrat editorials. Yeah. It's still very clear what their bias is. I mean, the fact that they're not is, openly endorsing a particular candidate is is it kind does of a, it does seem kind of strange that they would. It seems like it would be the easier path for them to just do that. Well, no. Mm-hmm. According to everybody else, it is cowardice <laughs> for the Washington <laughs> Post not to do their duty and yeah. and um, endorse Kamala. Harris, uh, because obviously it is the cowardly path to do what everybody expected you to do and what you've done for years and years and years and what people want you to do. Yeah. That's cowardly to, uh, (laughs) not do that. Yeah. Um, now the other thing about this is they didn't endorse Trump. Yeah. And they clearly don't endorse Trump. Yeah. There, people are up in (laughs) arms about them not endorsing Harris. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and it, it's, I mean, it's kind of unreal to me. And 
so like one of these, one of the suggestions is, <laughs> um, that, that the reason that they wouldn't endorse, uh, Kamala Harris is because Jeff Bezos is afraid of Donald Trump and what Donald Trump will do to him, um, when he takes office again, uh, <laughs> he's afraid know. of retaliation. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, the, now of course the Washington post did endorse Clinton in 2016 yeah. And Biden in 2020 when Trump was the president. <laughs> right. <laughs> like so this this argument don't really hold up. Yeah, but uh, uh, apparently but it'll you be know, different this time. Yeah, apparently um Bezos isn't doesn't want the Washington Post to endorse Kamala Harris because he knows he'll be one of the first people on the trains to the work camps if <laughs> uh when Donald Trump takes office if he if his paper endorses <laughs> Kamala Harris. Yeah. Now I, okay, so um, I saw a uh, a tweet or whatever you call it now um, from Bridget Fetisy, who I get a big kick out of, um, saying, <laughs> uh, talking about the trains and saying, I, you know, I don't think that you have anything to worry about. I think that people are way over estimating the um, the uh, ability of the train system in the United States, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was really funny. Yeah. And I I will add to that. Um, that uh, I think you have to have in order to have a camp. Yeah, you need four walls, or, okay. or at least three, right? Okay. I, yeah. Like at least three walls. And in four years, Donald Trump was unable to build one wall. So <laughs> I think that you are safe from these triangular work camps <laughs> right. that require more walls than he was able to get done in four uh, years. They so. can put some. They can put some chain link up pretty quick, man. Chain link and ball barbed wire. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't hold anybody. We know yeah. that. I um, know. I think the trains is the better argument. If Trump starts a thing for high speed rail, watch out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that means it's coming, folks. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was uh, is particularly funny, although a little dark, and um, yeah. you know, thinking about the Ohio wreck. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> just before, and of course we, you know, here it's been a long time now, many decades, but we had an Amtrak end Amtrak, up in the yeah. um, Mobile River. I remember that. Uh, and I, I've ridden Amtrak, and it's scary. Actually, I had a pretty good time. <laughs> oh yeah, um, that's a story for not the podcast, I think. But uh, yeah. anyway, um, it it's not the most efficient thing. That's kind of the point. <laughs> yeah. Um, you think her argument's better? Huh? I'm disappointed. Yeah. I, th- I, I thought I thought the wall thing was good. No, nah, no, nah, the tra- the trains is where it's at, man. We just don't have the train system to to to, to accommodate camps, work camps. To yeah. accommodate work camps, it's just not going to work, man. I don't think we have the wall building skill. <laughs> you're, you're still you're standing <laughs> with the wall. I'm, I'm sticking with it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. All yeah. right, fine. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, bombed on that one, I guess. Speaking of just <laughs> horrible coverage, though, so I watched the PBS News Hour last night and. Mm. Dude, this it's just it, the bias is in is just crazy. Like I can't I can't get over it. Well, um, and the thing that I wanted to point out really about the this whole thing with the WAPO and the LA Times yeah. um is just the elitism about it. Yeah. Like that all of these voters are out there waiting for the Washington Post to tell them how to vote. Yeah. Like this. Dude. Or or just even the idea that the Washington Post and the LA Times are that influential that people need them. Yeah, to tell them how to vote. Well, and that's that really kind of gets down to it because that them not doing that didn't change a single vote. Like there's yeah. nobody that was like, oh man, well they didn't get that endorsement, so I just I can't do it. I'm just gonna have to vote for Trump. Yeah. Well, <laughs> apparently, um, within like 24 hours of them announcing that they weren't going to endorse a candidate, they had like 2,000 canceled subscriptions. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> um, and you have to wonder about somebody who it would uh, cancel their subscription to a newspaper um, because they refuse to endorse a specific candidate. Yeah. <laughs> um, and not even because they endorse the other candidate, but because they just didn't endorse the they candidate that everybody straight, thought. Yeah. So like, are you really subscribing to the Washington post because you think that they're a great news source or are you just subscribing to the Washington post? Like it's some kind of activist organization. Yeah. Um, and, and or you just subscribe to the Washington Post because your expectation is that it's going to affirm your particular 
looking uh, for belief that, system. Looking for that echo chamber. Yeah. Like that's not, especially if you're going to cancel it over that, like that's, you know what you're doing. Like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and another great loss is that Robert Kagan uh, resigned from the editorial board. He was like editor in chief or something. He was some high ranking editor anyway. Yeah. Um, I think he ran the editorial page, but, uh, yeah. is, is really what it, his job was. But yeah, Robert Kagan, um, Pretty sure husband of Victoria Kagan Newland. Yeah. Certainly related. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, a, a great neocon lost from the editorial board of <laughs> the Washington Post. It's a real shame. Yeah. Real shame. Well, and that goes kind of back to the, the um, PBS thing is so one of the things they were roasting Trump for last night, and, and I don't know any better way to put it. Like, they were just... It they're so blatantly one sided. It's just it blows my mind. But one of the things was he had done some kind of forum with Tucker Trump had, mm-hmm. and um, like he made a comment. Well, first calling um, what's her name? I lost her name. Uh, Kamala. No, not Kamala. Um, Tulsi. No. I, I have no idea. No, who the you're lady about. that um ah, Dick Cheney's daughter. Oh, Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney. Yeah. Man, I don't know why I couldn't pull that one out of my ass. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, well, first calling Liz Cheney a warmonger. Um, but then he went on to say that she needed to be put out in front of a bunch of rifles and shot. Yeah. <laughs> More or less. Like, I forget exactly how he phrased it. I don't know um, that I can get on board for that yeah. for Liz. I-, I could probably get on board for that for Dick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, you can make a good case that he is a traitor to the nation and what have you. Yeah. But no. um, Liz, I don't think that she's actually accomplished enough to. Yeah, but this the whole <laughs> thing is just I'm so blowing you out of proportion. <laughs> like I just I don't. Um, it's it's kind of wild to me, and just but all the coverage um, on on NPR, like, like I said, just I, it it's it's crazy to me because. Like, that's public broadcasting. Yeah, that's your taxpayer dollars at work and a bunch of donations, actually. I think they mostly function on donations. Yeah, it's donations and tax dollars and probably Mm -hmm. more of one than the other. Um, But it's still, like, and there was a time where I did feel like you could get pretty straight coverage from, like, I used to watch, I watched the news hour for a long time, and I do feel like there was a time where, like, you got, well, it was always been a little biased since I've been watching it, mm-hmm. but not as But they blatant. made it a point to try and be balanced, and they don't even yeah. try to be oh, balanced Yeah, the, it's not even an um, attempt anymore. So this gives away my age a little bit, but I, I watched it, like, that was my news program when it was the News Hour with Jim Lehrer. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like, it's going back a ways. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, go ahead. Anyway. Oh, yeah, um... But yeah, it's just it's atrocious that that's that's the coverage we're getting from them. Mm-hmm. Like I say, I don't know. It, re- it really it really stuck in my crawl. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's kind of impressive how they try and cover up for these things. There's the, like the garbage comment. Yeah. Um, not the Puerto Rico is an island of garbage. It's kind of amazing how this has all played out. By the way, so this yeah. comment, this comic made this joke, which was funny, by the way. Um, which, I, like, I listened to a little bit of his material. That, that he done a pretty good job. So, mm-hmm. I've been trying to keep up with. He's a, he's a um, an insult comic. He's a roast anyway, comic, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's literally what he does. So you, nobody expected him to go up there and make a bunch of like non like non offensive jokes. Non offensive jokes. Yeah. Like you know what you're getting with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Trump said that, you know, you get a comic up there, you don't vet them, you don't know what they're going to say. Yeah. Well, there may be something. I mean, I'm sure Trump didn't vet them. Well, like, yeah. <laughs> Seems like um, somebody would have known who he was. Well, and I'll tell you, like, I believe that Trump didn't vet them because he is doing so much media right now. I can't keep up. Like, yeah. I tried to listen to the whole Joe Rogan podcast. I've made it like halfway through because there's just so, it, for one, that's three hours. So that's a commitment yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, and I, I had to listen to it in segments because listening to Trump talk on and on is rough. Like <laughs> about 15 minutes of him and just his just braggadocious way is, yeah. is a lot. Well, and at the same time, you almost have to listen to it straight through or you won't get everything because he talks in circles. Yeah. Well, I've, with, <laughs> with that one in particular, but with most podcasts, when I find the stopping point before I stop, I roll back like a minute so I can get like... So when I restart it, like I get kind of a, a primer for what was going, what was being said. 
the um, oh yeah moment. Yeah, exactly. Because once I have that, I'm, I'm in again, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, but he's doing so much media. It's crazy, man. Like I literally can't keep up. And talking about the the deal with the comic, with the garbage comment. So the media blew that up into this big thing. I mm-hmm. guess trying to get the, turn the Puerto Ricans against him or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. But um, so then. I mean, I'm just going to, so I lived in Puerto Rico when I was young. Yeah. I don't remember it very well. Yeah. I, I would, I would bet that if we asked my mom. Yeah. If she thought that that was an unfair comment, she would probably say no. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I, I shouldn't put words in her mouth. She'll yeah. she's gonna listen to this and she's gonna be like, I can't believe you would say that about me. <laughs> or she's gonna be like, Yep, you're exactly you're right. Exactly I'll, right. I'll, but I'll hear one way or the other. We may give an update on the next podcast. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, post election podcast. We'll have an update on that <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> but um, the status of Puerto Rico. There's a whole lot of Puerto Ricans in New York and Florida, and they're not there because they'd rather be in Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a fair assessment yeah. <laughs> so um so all yeah. i remember is the power went out like a dozen times a day the water was dirty you couldn't get anything anything that would spoil you couldn't get unspoiled because the power went out a dozen times a day <laughs> yeah that was a long time ago but still yeah but it stands like, yeah. there's a it lot was, of folks that remember that i'm sure <laughs> yeah in the late 70s puerto rico was a third world country <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um yeah it's kind of amazing though so like the comic made that 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 the media blew it up and then Biden made his like bumbling comment calling Trump supporters garbage. And we had a banana tree in our backyard. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that, and I remember that too, but there were oh, yeah. bars on all the windows. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> remember that. So. Um, all right. So anyway, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the timeline here is just crazy though. The Biden thing is hilarious too, because then everybody went out and said, like, if you heard the clip, it's, it's clear what he's clear saying. What he, like nothing he says is pretty clear, but it's well, as clear as you can ask. No, for. Uh, that's true. Actually, if you listen to the clip, you're like, you can't tell what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, Except for that part. <laughs> but that part seems pretty cohesive, pretty clear what yeah. he's saying. Absolutely. Um, but then, and then the white house's initial statement, um, was that he was talking about, uh, Oh, I can't remember exactly how they said it, but they, um, they completely they were to, blew up. They were up. trying to move it more towards his, not his supporters, but his surrogates, I think. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. But yeah. they, they had a very clever way to try to do it, because I heard a, the breakdown on No Agenda. Mm-hmm. But then after that, they put out a um, the uh, transcript and a different statement Yeah. Uh, that they sent out to all the media. <laughs> oh, really? Um, that Where they changed... Supporters plural to supporter apostrophe s possessive. Yeah. That he was saying it was the supporter apo- uh, possessive yeah. rhetoric that he was talking about, not about yeah. um, the supporters as a group of people. Yeah. yeah. Which doesn't, I mean, it doesn't fit contextually. No, exactly. It but, does. but they, man, they ran with it. And a lot of uh, media organizations like the Washington Post, we're more than happy to publish that. Oh, they made such a big deal out of nothing. This is what he was actually saying. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to um, omit everything that he said after that because then it wouldn't make sense to say it this way. Yeah. But uh, um, just it's, the whole deal is just wild. And then Trump rolling out in the garbage truck was just like. That like, was genius. It's genius. Like you can't, Absolutely you got to give the guy genius. credit, man. Like, and he did that quick too. Yeah. Like, I mean, within like a day or something of him making that mm-hmm. comment, he's in the garbage truck having the press conference. Yeah. Like, I'm just saying. Well, man. And he explained it, that his next rally, like the, his people put it together really fast. Like they were in the air and like, we, we can have yeah. a garbage truck we- for you or whatever. And he's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, and then, uh, oh, actually that whole, it, like that, that whole thing funny. was a good bit. It oh, really yeah. it was. was. Like, I don't know. It was like eight minutes or something like that. Yeah. But he, man, the yeah. guy is hilarious. He's fun to watch, man. Like whatever, <laughs> whether you like him or not, I like, know. He is you can't, entertaining. You can't deny he's funny. Yeah. Like talking about when he was looking at it, and how tall a step it was, and he's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, and all fall, the cameras I'm are gonna watching. I'm going to fall in front of all these cameras. <laughs> oh my god, the guy is—he's hilarious. Yeah. It's it's so. It it comes off being so genuine. Yeah. yeah. And like it's like seems genuine and it's self-deprecating and it's like really kind of endearing in this weird way and and Kamala has none of that yeah well and 
I think they may have talked about it on that sh- on no agenda, but it's definitely I've picked up on it from some places. Like that's really like podcasts are kind of that way, and that's why it's important for these um these politicians to do these long forum podcasts because they may not get grilled with all of these tough questions, but they really get to lay their plan out and you really get to know who these candidates are. Um, and like I say, I only listened to half of the Rogan one, but Mm -hmm. like I did feel like I walked away with a lot from it. Um, as far as just kind of knowing where Trump stands with things, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know who he, well, policy is so complicated and nuanced. Like the idea of doing it in 30 second bits or even two minute bits is just impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you really need that kind of, um, of long form interview to get people to, for people to really understand what your positions are. Yeah. And it also introduces <laughs> that the kind of like personal side of you. You're yeah. just like sitting there having a conversation with somebody. Yeah. It's not a speech. Yep. Like it's not all prepared. You're just like sitting there off the cuff talking. Yeah. And and that's why Kamala wouldn't do it. Oh yeah. Yeah, she she would not have made it through three hours with Rogan. Like, um, I mean, you know, her campaign would be over. Yeah, but the three hour of Rogan. <laughs> well, Rogan said that the, that they had agreed, but with demands that mm-hmm. he come to her, um, that it only be an hour. Yeah, uh, you know all these things. Like, that's not my show. Yeah, yeah. You if you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it. And I I really respect Rogan for sticking to his guns mm-hmm. on that and not just taking the interview. Well, and and talking about the elitism, there were there was a bunch of uh, of backlash from that too about Rogan. Like, you know, who is he to make demands of the president? No, he just denied the demands of the vice president. Yeah, like exactly. he he wasn't he wasn't making demands of her. Yeah. He was just expecting her to do what everybody else does for his yeah. show, including Donald Trump, who yeah. has been president already. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. Um, and yeah. apparently Donald Trump didn't want to do it there either. And Rogan was like, no, man, it's in the studio. That's yeah. how we do it. This is how we do it. Like, you're, you're yeah. going to do it or you're not. But this is how we'll... And I respect that a lot from Rogan. <laughs> and then he, apparently the big difference there is that Donald Trump was like, okay, I'm game. Yeah. Why not? Like, <laughs> well, and... The, <laughs> and, um, you know... Kamala's campaign was like, no, she cannot do that. No, there's no <laughs> way. Well, not, she's it, not capable. It would it would be campaign ending. Like, I mean, yeah. that would it would it would mark that. I mean, there, there, she couldn't come back from that. I I suspect that you're right. Um, did you see any of her town hall with Anderson Cooper? I don't think so. Okay, I I really should have pulled the clip, but I didn't think that we would spend very much time talking about the campaign at this point, just because it's so close. To the election. (laughs) We're days Um, before, man. We got to get it in. All right. So after this little bit, then we need to just kind of talk about the aftermath. Okay. All right. Because that's relevant, I think, now at this point. Um, But uh, so Anderson Cooper asked her about the border. Yeah. And how she said that Donald Trump's border wall was stupid and does she still think so? Yeah. And um, so then she spent the next, like minute or so talking about how terrible Donald Trump is. And, um, well, you know, Donald Trump, he's a Donald Trump and he's such a Donald Trump is such a bl- and terrible person and blah, blah, blah. And Anderson Cooper says, um, yeah, okay. But, uh, what about this border wall? You called the Donald Trump border wall stupid. And now you're, you're like, are you endorsing a border wall? I mean, it seems like you're endorsing a border wall now. Yeah. And then she's like, well, I mean, we don't reject good ideas no matter where they come from. And you say, okay, so you are now on board with a border wall. <laughs> Anderson, now, now we've already talked about the wall, Anderson. Um, <laughs> and y- yeah, but you you still haven't answered the question. <laughs> the, there's one question here is like, are you now supporting a border wall? Well, we got to we got to fix problems, Anderson. We got we're worried about fixing problems and and so well Okay, do you intend to fix this one with a border wall? <laughs> right. I, it was, oh. it was, un- and in the end, she she <laughs> never answers that. Yeah, she just never answers that. It's amazing to me because most politicians are graceful enough that they can not answer a question and still leave you kind of feeling like you got something from it. Yeah, and she she's just not capable of doing that. Yeah. Like. Um, and the the campaign she's running where she's completely walking away from her positions in 2020, she just doesn't know how to gracefully like do that. Mm-hmm. Like she just, she it's, it's kind of astounding that she's this bad at it. Yeah. Whatever her oral <laughs> skills is not speaking. 
No, it's it's not. Like I say, um, not especially not interview style. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, she can get through a, a scripted speech. Mm-hmm. Um, she still has trouble with that sometimes, but, but she can do that though. Yeah. But she can't, she like the one-on-one interview stuff where somebody's asking her questions. It's just, it's a disaster every time. Um, how about, did you see any of the speech she gave from, uh, oh, what, whatever they call it, the place where Trump gave the January 6th speech? Oh, um, I, th- I heard some bits from it, but I haven't. I, obviously, I, I ain't listening to the whole no, thing. No, no, no. I mean, who would? Yeah. Uh, I, I doubt the people there listen to the whole thing. <laughs> right. um, uh, she didn't promise Beyonce and then not per- not put her out there, did she? Well, Beyonce <laughs> went out there. She just didn't perform. Didn't perform, yeah. Yeah, but she was promised to perform. <laughs> Was she promised to perform? Well, I don't know. Yeah, there was definitely some misleading going on. Yeah, that it's not a surprise. Well, there was some misleading going on in this too. She's just yeah. she's just a liar. Yeah. Like it's kind of incredible. It's incredible to me that people can be so consumed within their echo chamber that they don't know that she's lying about some of these things. Like one of the first things she said is, you know, this space from which Donald Trump directed an armed mob to attack the U S Capitol on January 6th An yeah. armed mob. There wasn't a single that. firearms violation charged. <laughs> yeah. Not one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Isn't that still no, that's true? true? As far as I know, that's true. I think they found cable ties on people. Yeah. Like, that was the big thing that the stink was made out was the cable ties. Yeah. Like, okay. Like I get the, yeah, I get An what you can do mob. with them. But yeah. it's amazing armed to me that you can ties. get, <laughs> you can stand up there and say that. Yeah. And, and not get, well, it's because you have a complacent media. Yeah. Because any little misquote that Trump makes gets blown into this big thing. Not saying Trump can't drop some doozies because he oh, can't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I ain't saying that ain't the truth. Yeah. But, but, the, the, but the bias is just apparent. Yeah. Um, she keeps talking about uh, Donald Trump's 20% sales tax. Yeah. <laughs> She's referring to the tariffs. To the tariffs, yeah. Yeah. It's not a sales tax. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, but no. here's the, here's the truth is that, you know, both sides are kind of lying about this. First off, it's not a sales tax. Um, but secondly, the idea that uh, China or other countries will pay it is ridiculous, too. Yeah. Like in the end, the consumer pays all taxes. Yeah. If you tax a business, the consumer pays it. If you tax imports, the consumer pays it. Every yeah. every tax Those is tax actually paid by on. the consumer. Yeah. They're always passed on. Yeah. Never absorbed. Um, so like every, both all sides are misleading about that. But that you yeah. would even call it a sales tax is, yeah. uh, you know, makes it sound like everything you purchase yeah. is going to be 20% more expensive. Yeah. And that's not true. And yeah. We've and at already the very experienced least, that through the Biden administration. Right, exactly. <laughs> and more than 20%. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I don't, people have a, like a complete misunderstanding of tariffs and I'm not on board with tariffs, but Trump has also talked about eliminating the income tax. Yeah. Um, which won't happen. No. I, I mean, it's and just we, and he like the inertia that. is there. Like he, yeah. Oh, did he talk about it on Rogan? He mentioned, well, okay. that's what was so disappointing about it was because it came, like, I think Rogan asked him directly about that. And Trump was like, oh, yeah, we're interested in doing that. And then immediately bolted into like a 10 minute thing on tariffs. Like it it was, it didn't go very far as far as that end of it goes, which tends to tell me that we'll get the tariffs and we won't get the income tax. Yeah, almost <laughs> certainly. Yeah. Um, so that that's Horton's law right there. Oh yeah. Is that the president will ke- uh, keep all their bad promises and not, and none of their good promises. Exactly. Um, so yeah, you're probably right. But at the very least it does promote homegrown business. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's his reasoning for it. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it, he has two big pushes with the tariffs and one of them is that they should be paying us and we should be collecting. It's a good way for the government to create revenue. Mm-hmm. Um, but the but that's not even his main pitch. Like his main pitch is to bring those jobs back here. Like yeah. that's that's what he wants to do with the tariffs is use that as a way to bring business back. Yeah. Um, and it can be used for that. Like I'm not saying I I think that that ship's kind of sailed more than he realizes. Like a lot of the stuff, just it, the the manufacturing in this comp- country isn't coming back to what it was mm-hmm. years and years ago. But well, and it, it can hurt 
American business as well, because anybody yeah. that's importing raw materials and so forth is going to have to pay gonna be more for the yeah. raw materials. Yeah. But raw materials are generally less expensive than finished goods. Yeah. So if we were just importing raw materials and exporting finished goods, it would still be good on the whole. It would be a net win. Um, yeah. Uh, the problem is that we're not, <laughs> we're not doing a lot of finished goods either. Like in this country, most business at this point is service, not, yeah. Not manufacturing, not actual production. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh, well. Uh, but, all right. Aftermath. What happens so, next? I don't know. Something I was thinking about the other day, and I always try to, regardless of who wins, try to, after the election, kind of like take the things that they had said that I thought were good things and at least kind of hold on the hope that they'll maybe implement some of those and we'll end up in a better place. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about that, of course, with Trump, and you kind of know what you're getting with Trump because you had four years of him already. Um, and I think that there's a lot of hope that comes along with Trump. Um, like the the fact that a lot of the people that's endorsed him, we're talking about Tulsi and Elon and um, Vivek, like a lot of these people are going to be in his administration. And I think that's a win. Um, mm -hmm. so that's like kind of in the, in the side of like the positive things that I could see in the Trump presidency. Um, and I was trying to think about that with Kamala and the truth is, is more than well, any, you get, uh, Liz and Dick Cheney yes. and John Bolton and, and yeah. Well, and I, the truth is, is even with Barack Obama uh, after Brennan, his, Brennan, the old FBI guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, with Barack, no, even. Whatever. With every president, like there's, I've always like through the campaign had something was like, well, at least they're good on that, mm -hmm. um, or some like like big, um, Obama's big thing was health care, and I was like, well, I don't like what his plan is, but maybe it'll work and be better. Like I held on the hope for that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing with Kamala. Like there's literally like what is her big pitch that it that even if you disagree with it is a positive. Yeah. Like, there's nothing. Like, I can't come well, up with anything. Her big pitch is that I'm not Donald Trump. Well, her... Well, and that was... That was maybe effective in 2020. Yeah. But after four years of Joe Biden... Yeah. For most Americans, Donald Trump doesn't look so bad anymore. No, he doesn't. Um, I, I just... The, the only big pitch that she really has is is abortion and that it's yeah. like that's not it's not talking to me like i i don't know i just I, I when i really sat down and thought about it i was like well what would i take away from a kamala victory and i just i could not come up with anything yeah it's kind of astounding <laughs> yeah um, but especially the fact that she's going to get a ton of votes yeah, and it's she is. not out of I, the realm of possibility for her to even win Okay, this is what I'm looking forward to. Okay. Because I think that this would be amazing. All right. I, in some ways. Okay. Um, I, um, what, I, I, what I almost want to see, I don't really want to see it at this point. I would prefer a Trump presidency to a Kamala presidency, as yeah. ridiculous as Trump is. Absolutely. Um, but I, okay, what I kind of want to see is for Trump to win the popular vote and Kamala win to to win the electoral college yeah. because I want to see that complete inversion of the narrative that we've seen for the last 20 years or whatever it is, <laughs> exactly. where now all of a sudden <coughs> the Democrats are talking about how great the electoral college is because it prevents people like Donald Trump <laughs> from getting in the white house. And the Republicans are talking about how we really should pay attention to the uh, popular vote. Right. <laughs> that I want to see. Uh, you, you I just will, think that that would be just, so you're funny. You're just starved for the hypocrisy, right? <laughs> I just, I just think that that would be hilarious. Like yeah. playing clips side by side from oh, two man. years ago and today oh, of yeah. these guys saying the exact opposite opposite things. Yep. And you'll get it too, because they, they never disappoint when it comes to that type yeah. of thing. <laughs> and, um, and that's a possibility. That's oh, something it is that a possibility. It, um, it absolutely is. So I think, I think that would be, that would be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't think that we'll experience much of a difference. Uh, yeah. I, I think the places that we'll see the difference is not really in the government, but in the media. Yeah. Well, the media, so the next election cycle is going to be extremely interesting for the media because like there it's, it's just over mm -hmm. like the, like it's especially like if Trump has like a resounding victory, like a landslide, 
Like Which is I, your expectation. That yeah. is. So I, like I'm going to go on the record here and say, I expect it to be a landslide. And I actually think it's going to be such a landslide. We're going to have results the night of. Um, which doesn't seem like years ago would be like, yeah, well, why wouldn't we have results tonight? Mm -hmm. of? Now, all of a sudden, like everything on the news is it's going to be a week. It's going to be a week where it's going to be days like, um, but I, I think it's going to be so resounding that we have the results that night. Well, um, here's the thing that, that scares me Yeah, is that I think no matter who wins, the other side will think it's a lie. Well, I think that's, Absolutely, absolutely right. Uh, if Trump wins, the people on the left, they'll, there's no way they'll believe it. Yeah. Obviously, the Russians helped him win again. Yeah. Um, and if well, and they'll uh, have Kamala to have wins, some kind of narrative to stop him again, because that's yeah. what they used last time to prevent him from implementing his agenda. Well, and they will come up with something like that again. They, they will start seriously prosecuting those cases that are just kind of sitting there. That's what will happen. They'll try yeah. and put him in jail to prevent him from being president. Well, that's possible. I, I think. Yeah, I think that's possible. Um, if uh, if Kamala wins, certainly the right's going to say well, they stole another one. You know, it's, like, and and it really that there's something to that. And I'll tell you, just kind of me talking to people on the street, like I work in retail, I talk to people a lot. Like everybody, like nobody believes it anymore. Like yeah. it's 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 really kind of astounding the amount of people you can talk to, and just nobody believes in the process anymore. And yeah. I know that the polls bear that out. That's great. It really is. <laughs> like it really is. But like I say, the the polls bear that out. But it's really it's a different feeling when you talk to so many people that just passionately believe that. Mm -hmm. Like it's there's something to it. And I mean, a lot of people may think that's a negative. The anytime people are questioning government, I'm I'm smiling. Yeah. <laughs> I, see how great democracy is. Yeah. Um. I I think that this is this is the unforeseen consequence of them, of, of the powers that be polarizing America in the way that they have over the last 20 years or so. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, this, they, they didn't realize that what would end up happening is that nobody would trust in the system anymore. Yeah. Exactly. They thought that it would be an easy way to continue going about their business without being interfered with by us common folk. Yeah. Um, and what it, what it's turned into is that nobody trusts any of them yeah. anymore. Well, it doesn't help them that the common folk have became the media yeah. Um, and that's a problem for them. And I think that's going to be the big thing that we're going to see in the next election. Support like, your local podcast. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's going to be a huge factor. Not, I mean, it's already been a factor for this election. I, it mm -hmm. becomes more of one than the next. Yeah, it's, it's not a mistake that Donald Trump has gone on a, a podcast tour. Yeah. Um, at the end of this election here. And, and frankly, Kamala has too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not podcasts that i know yeah they're, they're, although honestly there's only of the ones that trump did there's only one or two that i know handful, also but yeah. um but he's been doing i'm familiar them. with joe rogan <laughs> yeah, yeah um so yeah there was something else i was going to add to that and i lost it no oh, well. but support your local podcast yeah like i say the next the next cycle is going to be going to be interesting though for sure mm -hmm. um that was me I, I was dragging my foot across the <laughs> chair. <laughs> so. I'm trying to stretch here while we've been sitting for a little while. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I mean, I, I look forward to the future here. I think, um, I, I think the more people doubt the system, the better off we all are. Like there needs to be a healthy skepticism in the system. Yeah. And, and the more people start to wake up to the, the fact that the government isn't working in your interest, the better off we all are. Yeah. You know, that way the libertarians can take over and rule over the working classes. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, did I say that out loud? No. <laughs> right. Oh, no, you let it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but now that, you know, then maybe the anarchists will get some power here and actually like the system will kind of fall apart and allow us all to be more free. Yeah. I mean, that's ultimately the goal, right? Yeah. You know. Um, the, the more faith you put in the system, the less free you are. The more you rely on them to do things for you, the less free you are. Yeah. Um, if you really want to be free, you need to be reliant on yourself and your neighbors and your community and forget the government because they're not there to help. No, in, in no way, shape, or form. Um, and 
every once in a while you get these like glaring examples of that they're not only are they not there to help, but they're not even capable. Like yeah. after these hurricanes and so forth, you see oh, yeah. that there's just, it's not that they're, it's not even that they're just incompetent. It's that, that, that they don't have the capability to do what they claim to be able to do for yeah. you. And you're better off relying on the people around you. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. um, <laughs> Does that seem like a good place to end? I think that's a, that's a, that's a strong finishing place. All right. Cool. So. Well, good luck in the election, everybody. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I hope you all survive and, uh, we'll, we'll see you on the other side. Yep. Um, when we're back next week and in the meantime, as long as the system is still up. <laughs> yeah. As long as the grid doesn't go right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, there's some weird stories out there's, there. There's a lot of people paranoid about a lot of things. Yeah, I'm just I telling you, I, I I work in retail. I, I encounter them regularly. I'm yeah. telling you, people yeah. people, and, and it really is kind of scary. People, a lot of people are scared, man. Yeah, I mean, I we finally figured out why um, you can't keep toilet paper on the shelves. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, but uh, you know, we'll be here next week. Um. In the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook and you can subscribe on iTunes and YouTube and Podbean. If the grid goes down, we'll be here right after it comes back up. Absolutely. Um, and uh, so we'll see you next week. Uh, and in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.